Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. All righty now, yeah. Big Boy's Neighborhood. Let's get uncut Un- up in oh, here. Boy. All righty now, Joker. Louis, I know you want to start off with Joker, yeah, the movie. Man. Yeah, man. I couldn't believe this weekend. I, I, I couldn't believe how many showings they had at theaters. It was yeah, like, man. I, I wanted to go check out a 7 o'clock showing, so I bought my tickets around like 5.30-ish 5 just mm-hmm. to make sure I got room. But it was literally 5 o'clock, 5.15, 5.30, 5.45, yeah. 6, every 15 minutes a showing. And the one thing I did notice about the theater by my house is that they were checking bags for the first time. Really? They never check bags. They always have this sign, but they had someone in the front checking bags. And Natalia, you said they were checking as well, right? No, they actually didn't check my bags, really? but they I had a small bag with me, so maybe that's why they didn't ask. But I did see a sign um, in front of each of the entrances oh. of saying that all the things that weren't allowed and also how they weren't going to allow. And like, what were some of the things? I, like, I you couldn't come in costume. You couldn't come with faint, uh, paint on your face. Hey, dude, if somebody would have walked in with a clown costume on or something, that, I would have left. Okay. Yeah, yeah like, don't, don't be be all weird and everything yeah. you know what i'm saying don't yeah. be that sound really dumb why why was there so much extra security on this movie because it was all the way around but you know what i think it, <clears throat> it was more of people were talking about um the theater shooting yeah. there was right. a lot of different lead up to it you For know what batman i'm saying movie. And, yeah and it then, was the batman movie where i think so that first, trying to make it was like the last okay, real legit it. batman yeah got and it. and it just became kind of a domino theory like yeah. you know how, how when you'll start to hear something then everybody else kind of kind of pick it up right. because even going to to my theater I was on alert, like yeah. kind of, yeah. you know, because you know the terrorist mind state mm-hmm. is really right. here Hell now, yeah. right. to where you start thinking. Even there's times when you see somebody get up and you're like, oh okay, you know, and, uh-huh. and that's just a sign of the I time. I sat that's down and are. like thought about the exits. I was like, okay, yep, if someone I comes in this same. way, should I go that way? Should mm. Matt and I jump over this thing to yep. go that uh, way? Like, it's, you think it's sad. It. That's where we are now. Yeah, you, but you, sorry, I was no gonna, problem. You ever see people come in like knowing that they're not supposed to be there? They, they didn't buy a ticket. They're just trying to sneak in. Yeah. Where they walk in and they're just kind of looking. And then I'm like, like hey. Those people scare me sometimes, mm. dog. Oh, now. really, though? Yeah, because I, I I used to do that a long time oh ago. But now it's a different, like, you I know was what I mean? the king of the theater. <laughs> <sneak>. <laughs> Someone walks in and they're just looking up for an empty seat and you're oh, just like. Oh, man. Why are they And here? now a lot of the theaters you it's go scary, to, they got dog. that assigned seat. And so that blow you out the game even more. Oh, so. hell yeah. But then when you walk in, because, yeah, it's not like you had a concert. Excuse me. That's my seat. You know you in somebody else's seat. Yeah. Especially if you sit, like, in the center. But they like as much as it did. At my, uh, the theater I was at, they had, you know, of course, some of the, the seats. It wasn't a complete, complete sellout. Okay. You know, but the, but that's the same. I mean, yeah. they were showing it like phone taps on the mm-hmm. tens. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, and, you know what I'm more. saying? I was like, good Lord have mercy. Well, like, like our show started yeah. at, I think we did the 630, if I'm uh-huh. not mistaken. I could be mistaken. And then they had another one that started at 7. Mm-hmm. And we didn't quite understand. So I left the 630 and I went to the 7. Then I watched the same part again, which is the seven thirty. <laughs> watched what? that part, Wait, so what? yeah. So I was like, okay, what? like how many? How many? <laughs> I was like, how many fucking watch? times do you have to keep going over the same part? Yeah, man. So, so what happened with the movie? <laughs> like, I mean, got to the end. Oh, okay, yeah, uh, man. Yeah. yeah, I just kept oh, watching the same thirty minutes. I'm like, dude, all this theater hopping. Yo, but watching it, like, like I said, I went in there just wanting to watch a movie. Mm-hmm. I didn't go in there watching to me all, all the critics and there all the reviews and talking about well it's too much violence in the movie mm-hmm. i knew there's going to be violence of right. course it's the joker and it's a fucking it's just, you know what i mean it's a comic book it's based off a comic mm-hmm. book so there's going to be violence but even with the whole mental health and i was just like all right i i went in i saw the movie at that joaquin phoenix did a fucking Who? amazing joaquin phoenix Who is it joaquin okay uh, all right yeah, this is uh, say one. Try to skip through it. Yeah, yeah no you straight all right so i think he did a fucking great job the movie mm-hmm. was dope there's there's some like iconic parts where I wish it was like in black and white. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it was just like very. It was. Just I read this dope. one after after I watched it because I don't like looking at um, like reviews before you go yeah. watch them. I don't give a fuck about somebody review anyway. Yeah. But uh, after I read it, just to see where people were at on certain pages. Yeah. And there was someone that was like saying how they took a lot from other movies. I didn't catch mm-hmm. a lot of that, but people enjoy. Yeah. enjoyed that as well. Well, the director is a big Martin Scorsese fan. Yeah. And so there's a lot taken from Taxi Driver, which Robert De Niro was also in Taxi Driver. Mm-hmm. Um, and Especially when he pulled up in a taxi. I was like, what yeah. the <laughs> like, why is this man driving uh, himself? And so he pulled a lot from just kind of you watching the deterioration of a man, just mm-hmm. the fall down from it, um, and just kind of spiraling. So now I gotta go see into, Taxi Driver. Yeah, I mean, I've never at? seen that movie before. So, Where's the plan at? anyone? Uh, the <laughs> dollar that? theater? Yeah, yeah. Playing, on, <laughs> playing on the twenties. The nickel theater. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. They, they should have ran it with Batman. <laughs> I mean, with with Joker. <laughs> they should have. Yeah. All righty, what's this Marvel petition? What is this? Okay, so we know we're obviously probably 
going to see some kind Wait, of nomination. Obviously, obviously, obviously I know. Well, I want to say obviously, but I was like, well, if it doesn't happen, then I think there's a very good chance that Joaquin Phoenix will get some kind of nominations for his role yes, as in too. Joker. The, the acting is just, it's so up uh-huh. there. It's amazing what he did. And I Like kinda, when I saw that, hmm. I was like, this dude is amazing. So in my head, I was like, who do you give the Oscar to? Joaquin Phoenix or Jennifer Lopez? Like if it was just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you were like when when, when yeah. you see these, yeah. these yeah, sure. transformations and I was just like, oh, I'm so torn here. <laughs> no, I, I feel you. Um, this is why I also think that... <laughs> <laughs> That's for another day. But no, um, now people are trying to get Robert Downey Jr. an Oscar nomination for Tony Stark in the in Avengers Endgame. They like started this whole petition because Disney went and they're putting out the so a lot of the studios they'll push these things called for your consideration and they're really pushing whether it's a movie or oh for mm-hmm. your consideration for this acting role. And they fans noticed that Disney did not push Robert Downey Jr. for Tony Stark when it comes to nominations. Mm-hmm. And so the fans are like all upset and they want like, to, uh, they want Robert Downey Jr. to get this nomination because of his heart feeling, mo- you know, uh, role in mm-hmm. the last one, which where, where he dies and everything. And I was just like, oh, shit. calm down. We talked about it before. Don't worry. He did. Yeah. You haven't seen it. You've seen I haven't it. seen it. Yet. Of course yes, he hasn't. I saw it. <laughs> I saw it. Um, but I just want to be like, all right, calm down. I feel like their Marvel fans always feel like they have to. Marvel and DC are always competing, and so with Joaquin getting this DC like possible nominations, mm-hmm. now they want to push Robert Downey Jr. for Tony Stark. And if you DC compare the Marvel. two, like if Robert gets the nomination, he's not getting the win. Joaquin would get the win. Joaquin, mm-hmm. he did that shit. You yes, know, and, and I'm thinking same. that if we're talking about Robert Downey Jr. getting the Oscar, I mean, why not the other ones? Not why not the other uh, yeah. uh, Iron Man movies? Why yeah. this one? Because yeah. he, you know, passed I feel at like the end or... they just wanted to be this kind it's of. Like everybody was in that fucking movie though. Yeah. You know Everybody's what I'm saying? Like, like a, he wasn't. A, he didn't carry. He did not that movie. No, I think it's just one of these things where they feel like they want him to be honored for like the last ten years of what he did with Iron uh, Man and right, blah blah well, blah. But I don't give him a ten year award or something. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? An appreciation you know award. You want them popcorn awards from MTV? <laughs> yeah. They always create shit and get somebody true. there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or give so, him yeah. the uh, the best person to play Iron Man, Tony Stark, by the name of Robert, Robert Downey, Downey Jr. Jr. Give him a piece of iron. He yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right away. <laughs> yeah. But I do like go down to the train tracks. Just cut some of that shit up. More of these comic books are getting more attention when it comes to like nominations and stuff. I think it's pretty cool. Man, and I they you seen that uh yeah. Living undocumented. Yes, I haven't seen. I haven't finished watching it yet. I think oh I'm on like the God, third or the man. fourth when episode. When I was watching but, it, what is it, you were the, one of the main people Netflix. that popped into my head <laughs> that I was like, she got to watch. This. It's a it's a lot to take in. To be honest, it's on so, Netflix, Louis. So yeah, it's sorry. a um it's a series that uh, was executive produced by Selena Gomez, and it's on Netflix, and it follows uh, eight families that are navigating through being undocumented in the United States, and it just it. I'm only like I think three or four episodes in and it's just taking me down like this roller coaster of emotions Mm -hmm. and starting off with one of the stories is um, this wife that's she's a military wife her husband's in the military and this is the one I thought of you and she's a Latina and her husband's a Latino and he fucking voted for Trump and not only because he voted for Trump though um, it was just really hard to watch because um, he just also seemed so cold to me disconnected Mm -hmm. distant like it was just very nonchalant about her whole situation. And even like, I don't know if they purposely did it. Like she seemed like alone. Like even when she went to mm. like one of, she's going to one of her appointments yeah. where she's, you know, uh, she's requesting, I forget exactly what it is, a pe- some type of petition so she could stay. And he doesn't go to this meeting. And I'm, I'm like, why wouldn't you go? She goes and picks up her best friend. Like your husband should have been there. And she hey, ends man. up, he voted for Trump. He voted and, for and Trump. And I understand. Okay. He voted for Trump. Latinos for Trump. I understand that. All right. My thing was even and you saw it in the documentary where his wife was saying, you know, he voted for Trump. That brings some problems. And he thought like, well, he's only going after the criminals. And mm-hmm. it is. And she said he never thought that he was going to come after a military. He would wife. always tell her they're not going to come. Yeah, after he you. said they're not going to come they're after, not gonna after you. Come after you. You're he's mil- for I mean, military. I, yeah, he, he's for military. Yep. He's for military. But it just made, it just made me. It just made me angry, to be honest. And when we're talking about Latinos for Trump, this is why. Because I can't fucking understand how you could be so disconnected. Like, how? How can you sit there? How can you be okay? How has her husband, can he just sit there and be like, okay, this isn't going to happen again? I don't know if it was the way that he was just shown or... It to me, it made me so mad because he's not the only one. Because, because there are people like that. And it made me so concerned to think like, damn, okay, like I'm... 
look, I understand it shouldn't be a free fall for everyone. Mm-hmm. Okay, I get it. But I also know that people don't fucking understand how hard it is to get through here legally. So they say, why don't you just apply for a visa? Amen. Do you have any fucking idea when how long it takes to even that do that? There's some like I just saw something where someone said when I put it up on my Instagram. Right. Because I literally before I got through the second episode, I mean, I wasn't even halfway mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. I was in there bawling, mm-hmm. you know, with with the little boy, and you it's, know what I'm saying. It's like so hard, it, and, and we, you you'll see where it's like, oh, this is going on here, this is going on here. But then when you look at the family and you get a backstory, and then you think, I'm just watching this one family, and there are literally thousands, thousands. of people that's affected. And you watch this, and I'm just like, man. And when I put it up on my Instagram, I'm like, dude, I'm not making no political statements. I'm not, you know, that's why I say argue amongst yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm just human. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm just human. And I saw that and it I I end up binge watching the whole the whole what is and it six episodes six, or something? Six, six episodes eight yeah. different families um What's it called? eight One different stories it's called living, living undocumented know. living undocumented um but it just it shows mm. a variety of the different types of situations yes. that has to do with immigration and it it just hits so close to home because it might own family i have like four different situations going on and it makes me it really worries me because i just remember the first conversations that i had with my cousin being on the phone crying because trump was running and what his whole campaign was based on it he is he is doing exactly what he said and this zero tolerance policy that the trump administration has is a big difference from the obama administration so when people are like okay obama obama when he deported the most out of all the presidents yes he did but he he wasn't just deporting everybody like yeah, it, it was, was no zero it was just tolerance. criminals and, it wasn't going against families to who it was yeah that's why he said families not fam- uh fellas not families exactly mm-hmm. criminals not children and and they listen now it's like like the one dude that came in when he was 14 and yes. he, they was like oh out and mm-hmm. and you know, 20 the, years the later kiss of death the, yeah. they, what they called his yeah and then it also made me I think mad all over again because from the beginning, though, I think it's a nice gesture. DACA. DACA is the biggest slap in the face for the students that have been here. Okay, you got brought by your parent and you, you've you been here. You've you've been working. You still a lot of them use this pin that they that they have to pay taxes. People are like, oh, they don't contribute. Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. They get nothing back. And then also like being, being here, you don't have a criminal record. But DACA is not a path to citizenship. It's simply a permit that gives you. Just kind of like a, mm-hmm. you're okay yeah, go for work. right now yeah, you cool. to be here, work now. But what's going to happen? Like, for example, what we saw happen this past year when when Trump decided to put a halt to it. Obviously, it hasn't gone through full on with the courts, but with the, through with the courts, I'm sorry. But a bunch of these students are in limbo with it because you don't know what's going to happen with you. And now, and now they know exactly where you're at. So you came out of the dark yeah. because you wanted to do this the right way. And how dare anybody? sit there and say well your mom should have brought you here well you should shut the fuck up because mm-hmm. you probably don't know what it's like to live like in Honduras, and Guatemala, El Salvador saying, when, you, when you think about countries as such they were saying some of them are 20 25 years waiting mm. and then waiting. you get some other countries where wow. it's like and I even read up on on the special you know uh, immigration that uh, what was uh, uh, Trump's wife Ivanka? Uh, Ivanka is that her name? No, oh, Melania. Melania. Oh, yeah. Ivanka Trump's the first one. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, like, yeah. Ivanka's the daughter in the first one. That, that, that was the other immigrant <laughs> yeah. that he, yeah. he married. Um, All the immigrants I used yeah. against. But just how she got this special permit, this, that, and the other. And I was like, ah, that's because of, you know, and it was before Trump. But it yeah. was like, mm. you know, Trump influenced back then, probably powerful guy, yeah. so on and so yeah. forth. Same with her parents getting getting in and getting this special uh, kind of immigration that only go to like world public figures and, yeah. you know, uh, Nobel wow. Peace Prize winners and shit Jesus. like that. So it, it, it's it, a lot. Yeah, man. But anyway, it's, but watch that. Go watch and it. Watch Living it because, undocumented. And, and it'll give you a lot of insight on some of the things that we don't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or textures of a story and just how how sticky the situation is and how scary it is because you could have been here for years paying taxes doing whatever you know what i'm saying and just sent back yep to and a country you, that you don't know know yeah, nothing about crazy. and and if after you watch this uh documentary and you don't feel any different and you still feel the same way you ain't shit mm. you ain't shit her words i said it there it is and as you know i i don't see how you i can just watch don't it. see and, I don't, and somebody can say I well don't. it was made through those goggles all right 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. There it is. Yeah. Mm. All righty. Well, we're going to go ahead and get on out of here, man. She got to see the rest of uh, Living Undocumented. She got to go see Joker. Uh, Louis, you got to see Living Undocumented. You saw Joker. Have you seen Living I've seen both. Okay, th- there it is. So I guess we go to lunch, me and <laughs> okay, you. There you go. All right, well, thank y'all for hanging out. Enjoy the rest of your day. Big boy, Big neighborhood, boy. gone.